Hi, I'm Simon Crompton from Permanent Style, and I'm joined today by Alex Sivetkovic from the podcast Handcut Radio. Mm -hmm. And today we're going to talk through some questions that Alex has seen that a few Permanent Style readers have put on the website recently. Uh, in each video, Alex is going to ask me one of these questions, and then we'll try and cover it from every angle we can. So, Alex, what's our first question? All right, here we go. Um, first question, Simon, from a permanent style reader is, how, uh, in today's climate, do I dress up in a dress-down office? Hmm, okay, very good question, and mm. I guess relevant to a lot of people as well. Yeah. Um, I guess the first thing I'd say is there's a lot you can do with quality and cut without actually kind of doing anything particularly unusual. Mm -hmm. Like, I think guys often, they go, oh, I can't wear a jacket, no one does, or I want to wear a tie, or kind of everyone's wearing kind of more casual things. But I find like a really good pair of, say, well-cut trousers, for example, that is not the kind of thing that's going to shout, that people are really going to stand out, but still make a big difference. You know, if everyone else is wearing just kind of fairly cheap chinos, and you get a really nice grey flannel trousers, yeah. very well cut, and you're still wearing with a shirt or anything else, you're not that different to how everyone else is dressed. No one's going to go, oh, you're wearing a suit and tie, you're going to a job interview or something like that, but you immediately look better dressed. Absolutely. I mean, I think it's, it's interesting you say that. Trousers was exactly where my uh, brain went to as well. Mm. I think you can, you can kind of get away with having fun there yeah. without upsetting the apple cart. Yeah. And you can play with things like your side adjusters versus, or maybe, maybe you go to a Neapolitan maker and you have a lovely intricate fussy waistband with various bits and bobs on it yeah maybe you have you play with the direction of your pleats or you wear a pleat when everyone else is in flat fronts yeah no that's a very good point and you can also play around materials a little bit where which is slightly less showy than doing in a shirt or a jacket maybe you know again no one really wears flannels ready to wear mm. but it's a bit more interesting or in the summer you get like a really nice you know, uh, olive green linen or something like yeah, that. Or you wear a coat or something. Yeah, or... exactly. And it just doesn't actually stand out that much. Nice. I also think that applies in winter as well. You know, I am, uh, as, as, as you know, an absolute sucker for brown, yeah. everything brown. Um, and I love wearing chocolate brown flannels or kind of taupe flannels or flannels with a kind of earthy colour. Yeah. And actually, it, it's, it's, it's a really chic alternative to grey. Mm. Um, and again, it's not, no one's going to kind of look at you and go, gosh, you're wearing you're wearing taupe trousers, you know, it's, you can kind of get away with it. Yeah, it's all those subtle changes, isn't it, and different things. I think a good, maybe a good equivalent in a jacket is you have something which is in a kind of, uh, you know, more people make travel jackets these days mm -hmm. or jackets which are kind of much more like knitwear, something that's made in like a jersey cotton or jersey wool, for example. Yeah. You know, that's, it doesn't feel like you're dressing up and doesn't feel like it's like a really smart jacket. But again, no one else is wearing that, so you're still kind of yeah, it's still distinctive. Else. And I guess that applies to kind of overshirts as well. Yeah, um, you know, th there are so many kind of ways to kind of add that extra layer mm. without anyone being able to say you look too smart. Yeah, um, you know, a really lovely washed drill or even a corduroy overshirt or yeah, something yeah. like that yeah. with loads of pockets, something that feels quite utilitarian. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah, and I think, I think guys who really like tailoring as well. Like I often get questions from people who are saying, you know, I used to work in a very formal office. Now I'm going to work for somewhere very casual. You know, you know, how do I kind of take some of those things I had before? Whereas, mm. and if you wear an overshirt, then it, yeah, very practical. You've got somewhere to put all the things you're used to having in the jacket you had before. Um, and I, I, particularly nice in the summer as well. Obviously, you know, you get kind of a linen overshirt, particularly in a navy or a green tobacco, something like that. And you wear it over a t-shirt, it doesn't look that smart. Yeah. But, you know, where everyone else is just still, just in a t-shirt, but makes, you're instantly dressing up. Makes a big difference. And of course, the other thing with overshirts is, is how you layer them up, mm -hmm. right? I think um, a lot of guys struggle to know what to put underneath, but mm. a really lovely merino, fine gauge merino crew neck or a long sleeve t-shirt actually just feels that tiny bit more formal yeah, yeah, yeah. than a conventional crew neck, which actually I think is something you've written about before. Right? Yeah, that's very true. That's a really good point. It's almost like you could, exp that kind of principle of just smarting up little things that you already wear, you could take to anything. Like that short sleeve or long sleeve like knit merino is just upscaling the t-shirt, you know? And then you could, um, upscaling your uh, just like cotton sweater into something which is actually a bit finer, mm -hmm. you know, which has got actually got like a polo neck or polo collar kind of collar as well, just a little bit smarter, you know, quite easily 
without having to jump to can I wear a jacket and tie or not? Yeah. It's just so much more easier. Yeah, just playing with layers. Again, it's all yeah. about subtlety, isn't it, I guess? It's just understanding those subtle kind of inflections in your wardrobe. Mm. Um, that leads me on to, to another thought for you, mm. which is shirt collars mm. and how they yeah, yeah. can impact uh, a kind of an office look. Yeah very, good, yeah, very good point. Yeah, I think it's... I think it's... Once you start getting interested in materials and doing something more unusual with that and understanding fit, then you get into things that actually kind of complement you and look really good as well. So if you're in a kind of office where you have to wear a suit and tie every day, then you don't really have to think about a lot of these kind of things. But mm. suddenly, when you've got a jacket without a tie, there's a lot more emphasis on the shirt and the collar. I think actually that shirt collar is a thing that really frames your face and makes such a big difference to how the overall look is. And if you have something which is kind of sitting out from the jacket, which kind of is sitting around the face like that, makes such a difference. You, I saw actually, I had a conversation with a, a reader a couple of days ago and he was talking, showing what kind of all his wardrobe and all the things that he wanted to change, you know, where should he put his money next? And actually the thing I said first is just get your shirts right because he still had these very formal kind of spread collar shirts were just kind of collapsing under everything he had. And no matter what too jackets, stiff. yeah, too right. stiff, not designed to be worn with the tie and anything else he was wearing, any of the jackets didn't really matter. It was just kind of collapsing underneath, but he hadn't even thought of that really. He was looking at jacket construction, for example, and looking at colours and textures, but the, I think the shirt collar was actually the most important thing in the entire thing. Yeah, quite agree. And I think that's where you kind of, if you can get, find a maker or a brand that, that has something with just a lovely soft roll, yeah. something that feels relaxed, yeah. that makes a massive difference in itself. It's a tiny, tiny thing, but I think it really can transform your look. Yeah, um, I mean, it's really, it sounds funny, but it's really satisfying recommending that kind of thing to somebody because <laughs> once you find a shirt collar that really, really works for you, you know, and maybe you get a, a, a trouser, like the cut just works perfectly for you. I think it's really flattering, and complimentary, slightly unusual and smart without being too much. You can just reorder the same thing. Again, then you can start getting into materials and little changes because those fundamentals are absolutely there. And yeah. It's really satisfying. It's actually harder to do than getting a suit right in many ways, isn't yeah. it? When there are less elements to play with in your mm. wardrobe, you have, you have fewer places to hide. Yeah. If you can nail those, those fine points of detail, it is, it is immensely satisfying. I've yet to do that <laughs> in my own wardrobe, but I'm told it's a very satisfying <laughs> thing. I think that's something we'll get into another question as well with readers in terms of kind of building wardrobes, but yeah, really satisfying. And, and the nice thing again about the trousers and shirts is they go so much between casual and formal, you know, mm -hmm. that shirt and can just be with one with a sweater at the top, or you can actually probably put it with a tie and jacket and dress it up a lot, you know, whereas a suit is not really that kind of flexible by comparison. No, no, indeed. Um, Especially. <laughs> actually, actually, one more point, I think the last point I think is uh, sometimes when people are wearing tailoring, they're going to, they talk about how do I dress it down? How do I make sure that it doesn't look uh, too smart and like you're coming from a formal office? And I think that touches on the points we've talked about already a little bit, which is about um, the shirt underneath, underneath that being really important or yeah. about knitwear underneath it, for example, wearing a roll neck or a mock neck, for example. Just, just dressing down the kind of tearing a little bit in that way. Yes, of course. I mean, that's something that I've, I'm trying to do a lot in my own wardrobe at the moment, is mm. find ways to dress down something very structured, for example. Mm. And, I, and I, I suspect that most guys today wouldn't feel comfortable wearing something this structured into an office in the first place. Yeah. But even if you take something like what you're wearing, and you relax it with a crew neck, or you relax it with you know an open collar or something that's been washed, yeah. it, it just it's just easier today. Yeah, yeah. and it just, when most other people in the office, let's face it, aren't really thinking about clothes very much, they look at you and they make an instant decision as to whether you look formal and corporate and smart mm -hmm. or whether you don't. And if you just have something like knitwear or a different type of shirt or something underneath, they immediately think, oh, it's just, he's expressing himself or he's wearing things he likes rather than he's dressing up to go to an interview or something else. Yeah, absolutely. It ceases to be a uniform, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. Smashing. Nice. There we go. Okay, great. Thanks very much, Alec. For more practical information and reviews of artisans, check out permanentstyle.com the UK's leading website on craft and classic style.